fancy seeing you here. Just having a quick coffee down at the coffee shop and I wanted to talk to you about sales funnel copy and why it's important to you. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you have created a sales page before. Maybe you've done a funnel, you've done it and it hasn't gotten that good a result and you're like, why? Is it the copy? Is it my imaging? Is it my offer? Is it, what is it that's causing the problem? Well, I'm here to give you some hot tips on why it's important, what to do about it and how you can get better results. So why is sales funnel copy, copy so important? Because it's what people read. It's what they're going to see, it's how you're articulating your offer to them. So they're gonna be thinking straight away, as soon as they see your page and read your copy, they're gonna start making decisions. They say you have four seconds to keep someone's attention. Hopefully you're still watching here with me, but you have about four seconds to grab their attention to really help you to be able to grab them, bring them in. I call it like the honey pot, right? Where they get a taste and they go, I need to get a little bit more of that. I want a little bit more of that honey pot. So that's why it's important for you. Now we look at the what, and I'm sure and I'm gonna go through in a moment, A-I-D-A, which is really important when it comes to crafting your copy. However, before I do that, the most important thing I think is always going to be your headline. The first thing that people read is the most important because it's what grabs their attention. You have four seconds to grab their attention, you better do it very quick and you better be able to articulate why I need to listen to you. Right, if you can't do that, it's kind of game over, right? It's kind of game over. So that's what you need to be thinking about is how can you make your headline work so well and so effectively that they can't help but do and read more from what you're doing. And I'll come back to you guys in just a sec. Well, that was good and had my interest for a second because the headline was breakfast, right? <laughs> Need to get that done. Now guys, your headline is the most important thing because it grabs your attention as soon as you start. Right then, right, what had my attention was I was hungry. Headline was breakfast and I ate it. Right? And it's important for you to think about that. Then what happens, you can worry about everything else. You can worry about a video sales letter, you can worry about how you craft your, cof uh, your copy and your coffee. However, once that happens, once they've read that headline, if that sucks, if that does not work, the rest of it is superfluous, it does not matter. So, you've had your headline, you've grabbed their attention, then what? Now, the traditional principle when it comes to marketing is ADA. Attention, interest, desire, action that is how all your sales copy needs to flow so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you and talk to you guys when i'm going to walk back to the office and uh, we're going to get things sorted out from there but i'm going to cover off on you how do you grab their attention like i said before you gotta have that headline right interest desire get them to take that action if you don't tell people to take action and i'll show you what i mean when we walk back to the office nothing happens right nothing happens so guys hang with me i'm going to walk back now to the office and i'm going to show you a few more points all right guys, we're on the way back to the office. It's noisy. But what I wanted to show you is for you guys to be able to understand, like I said, the last part of ADA is action. Now, look at this, right? You can see on this street, there's traffic lights. There's traffic lights that's telling people what to do, when to stop, when to go, when to drive faster, you know, whatever it is for you. But there's traffic lights telling people what to do. So if you aren't telling people in your sales funnel copy that they need to take a next step or what that next step is, you are doing them a disservice. You are not helping them and you're not helping yourself. So you really need to understand that when you're writing your sales funnel copy, right? When you're writing your sales funnel copy, you need to be able to share with them what happens next. You've got their attention, you've, you've piqued their interest. They want what you have. What happens next? What do I do? You need to be able to tell them what to do next. Otherwise, you're not going to be successful. You're not going to be able to achieve what it is you want to achieve. And if you can do this really, really well, then it allows you to have a high converting sales funnel. If you don't do this well, what happens? Well. You, I'll show you, you go out of business. All right, look at these guys. They didn't know how to grab people's attention. They didn't know how to ensure that people wanted to take action. And now, 
unfortunate as it is, they're out of business. Why? Because they didn't know how to bring people in. Now, sales funnel copy doesn't just go on your sales page. It's part of your whole business. It's part of the awareness of people walking down the street seeing your business. It's part of having people understand why you do what you do. That's what it's all about. I'm going to show you guys another sign here in a second. And you can tell me if it's effective sales funnel copy or not. Right? Because real world examples are everywhere of how this can be effective and how it cannot be effective. Right? Let's take a look. What do we got here? So, for lease, grab my attention. There's a reason why this property is still for lease. They've got my attention. I'm going, okay, cool. You have a property for lease. I want to lease a property. Tell me more. There's no interest there for me. You got my attention. I want to lease a property. It doesn't tell me how big it is. It doesn't tell me the price. It doesn't get me to take action. It doesn't say that they've had inquiries. It doesn't give me the desire to want to take more. Right? There's no action point there for me. Who should I call? Look, they have their phone number. They have the phone number. Does it say call me? Does it say email me? Mm, nope, doesn't say anything. Doesn't tell them what to do. So, what do I do? Nothing. That's why this place is still for lease. It's been for lease up there for three, nearly three months. No action being taken. Now, what could we do to improve upon that, right? How could we overcome objections for people? How could we um, inspire people to take action in our sales funnel copy? Well, call us today. Recently, five have been taken. Recently, everywhere else in the place is booked up. Encourage people to take more action. All right, now I'm gonna jump in the office. I'm gonna show you the last point to ensure that you guys know exactly how you can craft effective sales funnel copy. Okay guys, we're back in the office and I bet you thought, Kim, right? You're gonna take me back and show me a computer screen. Mm-mm-mm, no, 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 no. I wanna share with you two key principles that I highly recommend that you need to focus on to get better at your sales funnel copy. Number one is have a checklist. Like I like to use this one. This is from Bond Halbert, arguably one of the best copywriters to have ever lived. His dad was, uh, and he's learned from him. So he's got a checklist here. And I'll read you out just a few things to go through when you're looking at your ad copy. Um, change buts to yet. Insert sub headlines. Make sure you highlight, underline, bold. Insert ellipses. Search for pauses. Remove all non-vital words. Go on an and hunt. Wipe those out. Break up long sentences. Read copy aloud. Ooh, that's my next one. And shorten paragraphs and insert an anchor. But more than that, you need to have your own checklist. You need to have your own style because everyone has their own style when they write. I write something. Bond Halbert writes something, you write something, it's always going to be different. So what you want to do is make sure that you have an understanding of what it is that you want your copy to look like, sound like, feel like, and have your own checklist. Do I have my headline? We already spoke about headlines. Yes. Do I have my sub headline? What's that? More articulation. Do I have bullet points articulating what it is that I want people to do? Do I give them solid call to action? Do I have the option for, the have, for them to have a call to action? Now, just quickly, I'll sidetrack it. On sales funnels, what I find most of the time is people put too much information with not enough chances for someone to take action. Like if I'm reading it, don't make me read to the bottom. I'm lazy, right? Let me opt in. Let me buy now. Right, so if you have a sales funnel and you've got copy written on there, let people take the next step. Give them the opportunity to jump through, to take the next step, to articulate, um, not to articulate, for you to articulate to them that they need to take that next step. So make sure you give them ample opportunity to take action, all right? Must be done. And then secondly, and most importantly, is read it out loud. You heard it on that checklist from um, from Bond Halbert, bondhalbert.com. Oh. Reading it aloud, whether it's your sales funnel copy, your ad copy, or anything like that, makes such a big difference. Like, it's ridiculous. And sometimes there's reasons why you want to write in a certain way and you want it to sound a certain way. It may not sound the best because you know you want to use a little bit of embedded commands. Um, I always studied and trained people in NLP, and there's ways that you can weave that into your copy. For example, all caps is read as an embedded command. So if you read it, click here, and it's all in caps locks, that's how you read it. Click here, 
which is embedded command. Just click here as a statement, and if you put it in all lowercase, that's what it sounds like in someone's head. So these are some of the persuasive techniques that you can weave into your sales funnel copy. However, reading it aloud is gonna let you go, hang on, that doesn't really make sense. Hang on, is that grammatically correct? And then lastly, a little tool I like to use called Grammarly. Now when you're building your funnel, it probably won't work well because it uh, can cause problems in ClickFunnels and all those fun platforms. However, using it to make sure that you've written your funnel copy right, grammatically correct, like what I've just said there, probably isn't grammatically correct, spelt correctly, is worth its weight in gold, 110%. I would highly recommend putting that on there. However, write your funnel copy first. Write it outside of your funnel. So if your browser crashes, something changes, you don't wanna be going, oh, hang on, oh, oh unfortunately, my, my copy's all gone. Mm -mm -mm. We don't want that to happen. We wanna make sure that you are focusing on doing the copy outside of the platform. Same as when you write ads, I hardly, I never tell anyone to write ads on um, Facebook because it crashes and it burns and people cry and there's tears because you've it crashed and you're writing the best copy of your life. So make sure you write that stuff first, okay? guys and that is it from me today make sure you like the video if you liked it make sure you comment let us know what you liked best what areas we can improve upon what you want to hear for next time um, and also subscribe so you get all the notifications every time that we go and drop a new video for you until then adios muchachos see you then